Hi, I'm Pastor Brady. And I'm Deaconess Marissa. And welcome back to P&D &D Theater. Theater. You know, Marissa, we had an interesting reading in church this past Sunday. What was the reading? The reading comes from Matthew chapter 10. Well, what did Matthew chapter 10 say? Well, I'm glad you asked. Matthew 10, 34-36 says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Now, after reading that, you might be thinking to yourself, You need to tell my Willis. Jesus comes to bring a sword? Mm -hmm. Households will be divided? Mm -hmm. I thought Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Well, he is the Prince of Peace, just maybe not in the way that you were thinking of. You see, a lot of us, when we think of peace, we think of not fighting. We think of maybe the opposite of this. Begin! So what kind of peace are we talking about then? Shalom. Bless you. No, shalom, the Hebrew word shalom. You see, in Hebrew, shalom does mean peace, but it also means wholeness, completeness. The idea is that there's peace between two entities, people, and more importantly, peace between God and man. Oh, so it's really about restoring relationships. Yeah. Welcome home, man. <laughs> That's right. So when Jesus died on the cross, that's exactly what he did. He redeemed those under the law, and he restored that relationship with God our Father. That's the peace that he brings. The news that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, it brings us great peace. But it doesn't bring peace for those who don't believe the message. So that's what Jesus meant when he said he didn't come to bring peace. That's right. He knew that the message of Christ alone it would divide people, even households. There's no way around it. The message that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that that's the only way to heaven, it's going to bring conflict. And conflict is something most of us try to avoid. Sir? Sir, are, 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 are you listening to me, sir? Sir, I'm talking to you! Most of us are like Ron. We just don't want to deal with people, specifically what they might say or do when we tell them about Jesus. Oftentimes, we avoid telling our friends and family about Jesus and the eternal peace he brings because we don't want to sacrifice the earthly peace we share with our loved ones. In fact, oftentimes we tell ourselves that it's because we care for our loved ones that we don't want to tell them about Jesus in the first place because it might risk rocking the boat or it might make them mad at us. So we just don't tell them about Jesus. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. And that kind of thinking is so wrong. Now, we're not saying that every single conversation you have needs to be about Jesus. No, you can talk about the Packers. And, and the Packers and some more. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Bart Starr. Uh, Vince Lombardi. Uh, the, uh, Lambeau Field. And you don't have to talk about the Packers. I mean, I guess there's other things. But the point is, you can talk about other things. But that doesn't mean that there's never a time to talk about Jesus either. Will you pray with us? Lord, we thank you for the eternal peace that you have given us through your son, Jesus. We pray that you would help us step out of our comfort zone for the sake of the gospel. Amen.